Hey everybody, uh, Scotty here, and you're about to watch PS1 versus N64. I think I actually did this episode years ago. I uh, hope you guys are about to enjoy it, uh, coming out from the Patreon vault. But I also wanted to point something else out to you. A little thing called the Pessimist Productions Patreon. And it's like we have a new goal here. What's this goal here? Jordan Peterson Gauntlet? If you want it, then you know what to do. I mean, I guess I could explain it further than that, but a lot of you guys have been clamoring for this. By the way, me and uh, TJ have been cooking up some uh, different things for this gauntlet. It's going to be a special gauntlet. You guys want to make that happen? You see the goal right there? 5,000 patrons? Pretty close to that. You know what to do. Go sign up right now. fat fried we had to fucking uh it sucks because you know we're in la we had to fly all the way back down here just to do this one show and we got to fly bullshit. all the way back and it's like i wish we had just recorded these hard, you know yeah. in advance you know yeah for sure <coughs> that would have been smart no actually we did record these in advance you know what's happening right now tj what's as, that as as the plebs are watching this right now every hot chick that came to the dff meetup in la is blowing me Wow. Right now. Every single Isn't one. Isn't it awesome <laughs> to know that me now in the future is getting like an eight-way blowjob from the hottest chicks you've ever seen? Well, yeah. And, they, Paul, and the sad it, thing is that all these people <laughs> at home, not in L.A., watching this. I mean, in fairness, Paul. Just stupid. That's only, two, that's only two girls, the only two that showed up. But well, still, that's still two more than you guys are having. Yeah. <laughs> one more double blowjob than you guys are uh, getting. TJ, I have, I have a complaint about the intro, by the way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. So I attack first. Right. So then Paul attacks, and then you fucking glory grab and chop its head off. Yeah. Correct. So we soften it up, do all the hard work. Like, I stun it. Paul fucking shoots its goddamn tentacles off, and then you just jump off and get to do an easy little chop. Yeah. You, what, do you, what did you contribute? What did you to contribute, that really? Well, I you contributed. Disabled the fucking. Thing. I wait. You know, I contributed striking the final blow. That's what I contributed. So you, so you showed up and finished the job after we did all yeah. the hard work. Yeah. After As it, it was should just be. A slimy mess. Like, please don't hurt me anymore. You're like, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're like, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that guy's name? Oh, you're like Optimus Prime in that fucking terrible Transformers movie. Megatron's all like, please, I am sickly and weak. Die, bitch. Yeah. That's you, dude. And Optimus Prime is a fucking hero for it, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, hey, you guys can criticize all you want, but the fact remains that I'm the best, and you guys suck. Anyway, today we have... Uh, there's no point really shilling Patreon, because, you know, by the time that this comes out, we'll have 20 million patrons. Yeah. And uh, we won't need any We'll be done. Patrons. I mean, you know, we don't need any more. Um, but today's topic is... Nintendo 64 versus PlayStation 1, the original PlayStation. You know, we did an episode on SNES versus Sega Genesis, and it was one of the most fun episodes, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot uh, of fun with it. Among my favorites, maybe even my very favorite that we've done. This, so, one, this one here, very contentious. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is just, you know, the next gen of the console so wars. The Sega's kind of out of the picture at this point. 
Well, the Sega Saturn, Saturn did compete, but eh, that, barely. I mean, yeah, barely. Yeah, uh, the the Saturn and the Dreamcast were, you know, they just didn't really do much for Sega, and Sega kind of fell off. And but a new competitor emerged for Nintendo in the form of Sony. And there was a pretty intense battle, although I don't think it rose to the level of intensity well, and rivalry. This one is more one sided. If you that, go from a, a commercial pers- uh, perspective, right? Because. You know, no, not to spoil things or anything, but in terms of sales and stuff, you know, it's there was a clear close. winner. There is a clear winner. So, in 1989, uh, Nintendo introduced the uh, the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, whatever. Uh, within a couple of years, rivals had introduced 32-bit systems that eclipsed, you know, the capabilities of the Super Nintendo. So, Nintendo announced an agreement with uh, Silicon Graphics, Inc., it's SGI, uh, to develop a new 64-bit video game system. Because we're still in the bit wars at this point. I mean, right. Nintendo put the fucking <laughs> amount of bits right there in the goddamn system name. Six, 64 was the highest the bit wars ever really Yeah, had, right? really. Um, there was a system, I think, that tried to come out with some, like, we're 128 bits or something, but, but no one gave point. a shit by then. Right. Everyone, people were just like, yeah, fuck. Wasn't the... The Jaguar, or I whatever, think it the was. Atari some, Jaguar. Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah. And it's just like, eh, no one cares about bits anymore. Uh, and, you know, now you don't hear anyone fucking talking about the goddamn bits. Right. You know, no one's like, man, the fucking PS4 <laughs> is a 7,948-bit well, system. Well, the thing is, the graphics the now speak for themselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the bits was just a, 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 a stand-in for, like, our graphics are good. Yeah. So it's good. It's buzzword. Uh, you know, Synergy. and last time when we talked about bits, people were like, actually, bits means, I mean, yeah, maybe that's what it actually means, but for the purposes of this marketing it, war yeah. that was going on, all it meant was, oh, graphics, Look, bad. I understand there's like computer programmers in our audience, and yeah, bits mean something, but to the average schlub on the street, it's it, what it, To all the kids the having was, these fights. This is better you know? graphics. To all the kids having the fights in middle school and junior high and shit about bits, none they of them know, know what the fuck meant. a bit was. Okay, they know what a fucking bit was. And to this day, I really don't yeah, have a good idea what a fucking bit is, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> Not in my wheelhouse. I don't give a bit. Um, although, uh, you know, this uh, Silicon Graphics Inc. that Nintendo went to, they'd never really done video game design before, but they were a company that was regarded as leaders in, you know, computer graphics technology. So it's like, okay, we, we're, we're in good hands. So a natural fit, basically. So after several years of development, the system was uh, finally released in 1996 as the Nintendo 64, but the delays and a shortage of games during the first year of availability gave the advantage to Sony, who had released the PlayStation over a year earlier. What's interesting about this, too is that Sony was actually helping uh, Nintendo to develop an optical-based uh, system. Get a little bit more on your mic, Scotty. And that, and that ended up being abandoned. So actually, Sony and Nintendo were actually kind of working together before the PS1 uh, was even a thing. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, um, And the N64 probably would have been a much better system if it had had the optical drive. Oh, like remember hard, we were... Oh, heart I'm gaming sorry. was on its way out. I mean, there's only so much you can oh, do. We remember when we were kids, TJ, it was, it was released, or there was the promo was the Ultra 64. And it, yeah. the big thing, they, they even said at the time, that the rumors were like, it's going to be CD-based, it's going to be optical-based. And that's why that went away. Yeah, uh, I remember when I was, uh, you know, I used to read Nintendo Power all the time. Yeah. It's a Nintendo Nintendo's little magazine, and... Um, <laughs> Uh, I remember seeing the early ads for, like, we're developing the Ultra 64. Yeah, they even had pictures of it. Yeah, uh, I could probably pull like up a prototype picture. pictures and shit. Let's see if I can find an Ultra 64 <laughs> picture to put up on here. But, yeah, I was pretty jazzed about it um, because at that time I had just started, like, PC gaming. And PC gaming at that time was just transferring to CD-based as well from floppy. And it was incredible. Like the types of games we were getting on PC were just like, so I did, I knew moving to an optical drive was going to unlock a lot of that quality. <laughs> yeah. But there was uh, a lot, home console but there was a lot of issues with them working together. Um, I forget the guy's name in particular, but so there's a lot of these issues. So Nintendo basically, and so, so they just, they, they or SGI, they go their separate ways and they ended up developing that into the PlayStation one and Nintendo 64 sticks with the cartridges. 
So the Ultra 64 here, I mean, it doesn't really look too different from the final product. Um, just has a different name. You still see the cartridge slot there. So by the time they released this, they must have already known they were going. They with, were moving away. They must have already known they were going with cartridges. And I shit. remember seeing a Nintendo disk drive fucking prototype. Um, if there was that, I can't find it. Oh, wait, maybe this. No, that's not it. Okay, so um, there might have been that. I can't personally find the thing. That I don't think it ever got like out, of, out of the prototype phase. But um, I'm, I, I kind of remember seeing maybe something that was a CD thing too, in like uh, in Nintendo Power. But uh, this is the only thing I can find in terms of N. Uh, I'm sorry, Ultra 64. It looks pretty similar to. And the you can see, N64. I mean, it looks pretty much the same as what yeah. happened, just different, different logo and, and shit. That very decision is really what made the difference. I feel honestly in this con- in the console wars with, between the 64. And the PlayStation One because the cartridge staying cartridge based just cost Nintendo so much in terms of what they could do. So limiting. So let's take a look at uh, some of the technical specs. Not that we understand, but someone out there does. Um, Nintendo sixty four uh, CPU type MIPS sixty four bit uh, RI SC CPU. Risk. Yeah, probably. Pre- I mean, I'm just gonna spell it out because I don't know what's. What's the clock words? speed was definitely good for the time. So MIPS and RISC. So 93.75 megahertz. Uh, clock speed, yeah, 93.75 uh, megahertz there. Uh, memory, uh, <laughs> 36 <laughs> kilobytes. Wow. Oh, wow, dude. Kilobits, sorry. Uh, it says M-bits? Oh, M-bits. Mega, me- megabits, megabits, right? Uh, that's, wow. Uh, transmission speed, maximum of four 500 megabits per second. Okay. Uh, co- coprocessor, RCP, SP, uh, sound and graphics processor, and DP, DP Beta, pixel drawing processor incorporated. <laughs> uh, coprocessor clock speed, 62.5 megahertz. Picture resolution, 256 by 224 <coughs> to 640 by 45. I mean, dots. so those resolutions today would just seem right. I, I mean, mean, downright awful. I mean, that's a. I mean, I mean, you, my YouTube thumbnails are fucking way higher resolution than that. But this is 96. Yeah, so. sure, of course. Uh, flicker-free interlaced uh, mode support. Uh, color is 32-bit RGBA pixel color frame buffer support. Um, graphics processing functions, Z buffering, anti aliasing, uh, realistic texture mapping. Dimensions. So these are all these are all settings that these are just, last, you know, the that dimensions last, of the actual system. <laughs> that last one, the graphics processing functions. A lot of those are still like things in games that you can tweak today. So <clears throat> it, all, all the, the anti aliasing and shit. From what I read, the CPU architecture was pretty brilliant. It just wasn't there yet. Um, so then. Um, this is a kind of a look inside the console, you know, beyond just the, the uh, guts. This is just the guts of it, and it's the same basic information about what was inside it. But you know, it's just kind of cool to look at, um, look at what's actually inside, you know. Yeah. So here's the actual system beyond just the uh, the outer shell. Just a board, capacitors and shit. <coughs> yep. This is just like a motherboard and all the shit you need to run this fucking. Of the games you'd want to play. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so let's talk a little about uh, Sony, because they were, of course, the other competitor. So well, in 1988, competitor. Sony entered into an agreement with Nintendo to develop a CD-ROM attachment known as the Super Disc for the uh, soon-to-be-released Super Nintendo. Dude, so look that up. So Look yeah, Nintendo Super Disc. Nintendo <laughs> Super Disc. So this was there was supposed to be a CD attachment to the Super Nintendo, basically, like like, like there like was the for Sega uh, yeah CD yeah yeah like Sega CD or the oh, they're probably glad they didn't go that X route. or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Nintendo Super. So Disc. you know Super what? Disc. Something that Sega doesn't get credit for is they had the right idea, they just didn't make it the see, it was an add on. And that's why it didn't work. If it had just been native to the system, and that's just like that's the you know the the way you want to play you know install games and put, run your games, it would have been perfect. By the time they released a native optical system, the PS One was already there. So yeah. it's just like market share was gone. Everybody had already had a PS One. Why are you going to go get a Dreamcast or whatever? The fuck? Well, what they did they did the Sega Saturn, and that just did not yeah. get any library. It was kind of it was like Windows Phone games. You know, it's like did they exist? Sure. Did anyone want to buy it or play them? No. I can't tell if I'm looking at. I mean, this looks like the Nintendo controller, so I don't know if this is the Super Disc here, but 
Um, or if this is in like an early prototype of the PlayStation, because it says PlayStation on it, but maybe that was something they were toying with. I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly we're looking at here, but this yeah, is look, surely I mean, it looks like an early. This looks like an early PlayStation here. Yeah, but you see the controller there is a Super Nintendo controller, and this 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 <coughs> seems to be uh, okay. So this is the Nintendo PlayStation prototype. Okay. Wow. So this was originally that. The, so they were developing this as like, hey, this is going to be our new system. It's going to be the, the the Nintendo PlayStation. You know, it's got Sony slapped all over it here. So really, I mean, all these consoles are racing towards being able to use CDs. But uh, the the point, the really the point here, whatever the hell this thing is, or whatever sort of thing it falls on in terms of the development, is that um, PlayStation and Sony were trying to work together to create something. And they, they were calling PlayStation were tr- and Sony. I think you mean Nintendo. No, and not Sony. PlayStation and Sony. I mean, uh, you know, Nintendo and Sony. We're trying to get together to create something. Uh, the original PlayStation read uh, Super Discs, which were special interactive CDs based on technology developed by Sony and Philips called CD uh, ROM XA. So they were black bottom. You remember that? Yep. The discs for the PS One were black on the bottom instead of shiny silver. Which I always thought was awesome, dude. Oh yeah. That was like the coolest thing. You'd you'd open up a PS One game and you'd see the black, but like and you know, and I always wondered that too. I'm like, why the fuck's it black? Because I was used to others having CDs because they were common in the, uh, the mid '90s. Yep, and they had that, like you said, the silver backing. Yeah, that chrome backing. So uh, the the CD ROM XA, uh, the format basically allowed audio, video, and computer data to be accessed uh, simultaneously by the processor. Cool. Which uh, that was a new development <coughs> and at far that time. superior to cartridges. Uh, the PlayStation also read audio CDs. Um, yeah, of course. And that was another big fucking it. selling point of the PlayStation. Yeah, because really you know CDs were a big thing back then, and it was like a home entertainment. <laughs> and uh, DVDs too. I don't. Although yeah. those weren't super big at that time, but you know they weren't far around the corner. Yeah, well, that, well, that was a really cool thing to have, though. It's like you know I want to listen to some music. Oh, just put it in your PlayStation. Wait, did the original PS One play DVDs, or was that not till PS Two? PS Two no. was the first. one. Yeah. Okay. So never mind. Um, they had a cartridge port for accepting Super Nintendo uh, games as well. Uh, the PlayStation was envisioned as the core of a home media center. Sony only manufactured about 200 of them before deciding to retool the design. Uh, the new design, which was dubbed the PlayStation X or PSX, uh, dropped the Super Nintendo cartridge port and focused solely. So basically, Sony's just like, man, why are we, why are we doing this with Nintendo? We could. <coughs> fucking compete with well, Nintendo they, they make our own shit. They didn't have the software to do backwards compatibility at that time, so it was kind of just like... And, and, and Really what they did was they, they, made, they just made a gamble on the future. They said, this is the future technology, the cartridge is going away, let's do... What's, the future... And I mean, when you guys when you guys will see this, I mean, you guys have already seen it, but when the audience sees the difference in the graphics, you're going to understand why they made that decision. Um, so uh, the, the component... Um the components were all revamped uh, after they dropped the Nintendo thing. They wanted to totally immerse the gamers in a responsive sort of experience. Uh, they launched in Japan in December of 1994 and in uh, the United States and Europe in September of 1995. And the PlayStation quickly became the most popular system available. And here we can look at the PlayStation specs here. Um, I don't. Rem- I don't exactly remember what the hell the fucking previous system specs were, but uh, CPU 32 bit um, R 3000 A risk running at 33.8688 megahertz, uh, 30 MIPS MIPS bus bandwidth 132 megabytes per second or megabits per second. Um, uh, RAM sixteen megabits, VRAM eight megabits, operating system ROM four. It's a shame megabits. we can't see these side by side, so we can see you yeah know, how they differ because it's I can't I can't remember. What yeah, like I said, you know whatever. The, uh, the color palette one sixteen point seven million colors seems higher uh, than anything I remember well, reading on the other one. Let me let me give you the short version of this. I mean, this is way better. Well, look at the high, <laughs> look at the higher resolution yeah. too. Uh, Six forty by four eighty is a yeah. modern revel. Uh, it's a, yeah. L- l- let me get the long, going the long, away. The long and the short of this is that this is a way better system graphically. Right. Um, tons of advancements here. No, that's not to say that the sixty four is terrible. It's just that it's this outclassed. is it's outclassed. It's outclassed. Here. It's outmatched. And here we see the inside <laughs> of the uh, 
the PS1, the PSX, whatever the hell you want to call it. Cool. Um, just kind of looks like a more sophisticated piece of machinery, too. It really was. And I mean, I mean just look at these side by side. I mean, <sighs> Sony, w- Sony was just Sony was just using cutting edge technology at the time. Yeah, I mean, this just I don't know. I, I don't now, know what the all these was, the technical specs mean, but I know this looks a lot more. The PlayStation fucking sophisticated was more than expensive, too, though. Sure. I mean, you got to remember too. PlayStation. I think Sony saw the 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 con like the computer games that were coming out that had actual orchestral sh- scores and and actual voiced dialogue. You know what I mean? And they knew that was the future. They knew the future wasn't little text boxes. The future was voice actors and movie style cutscenes. Yeah. Shit. Too bad it was so many years before they actually got any decent voice actors to <laughs> well, you do know, anything with these games. It was a it was a brand new no, you know, fucking fr- like there weren't video game voice actors out there. So you know? uh, let's take a look at some side by side comparisons because you know whatever we can we're not tech guys. Maybe Scotty is a little bit, but for the most part, you know, we don't know what the fuck we're looking at there. Um, if it was a Macintosh, I could tell you what I was looking at. <laughs> there you go. But you know what? Where where it becomes evident, I think, is when you look at side by side comparisons of what the systems oh, yeah. can do. So let's take a look <laughs> at a few side by sides. I'm gonna go ahead and um, kill the volume a little bit. Uh, we should still be able to hear it, but I don't think the audience should be able to. So let's just take a look. Which is best? All right, so here we go. Here's a little comparison going on. The <clears throat> so on the left, we have the N64, and on the right, we have the PlayStation. Okay. Better put that controller pack in. Yeah, Hurry get up. that controller pack in there. Yeah, lazy stick your bastards. goddamn controller pack in, idiot. So the title screen of the N64 is way simpler. Yep. All right. Hey, more languages for N64. More languages for the N64, Italiano, Deutsch. <laughs> These are pretty comparable. The, the load screens are pretty comparable. Not the title screen, though. Yep. So, the N64 has like more of a range of dynamic motion going on there. So far, yeah. But let's see what the actual gameplay looks complex, like. It's less complex, though. It's traveling on one plane where this one is switched. Yeah. So the N64, I think, is cheating a little bit here. Yeah, it's kind of just recycling. It's obviously just pre-rendered and shit. It looks better, thing. honestly. It's doing more with less. Right, right. Um, but the complexity of what's going on on the on the PlayStation screen just wasn't even. It wasn't even. And, and <coughs> this, you got to understand, this looks like shit now. But back in the day, this t- this sort of thing in your home video games was like mind blowing. Well, yes, three D objects. Well, on the left you have a first person perspective. On this one you have a th- you have a I you have a chase camera yeah, that, with switching perspective. They're showing the ships. They're showing. Yeah, the, uh, the- and the longer we watch, the better the PlayStation one is looking because yep. Nintendo's it's actually interesting. Nintendo's just doing the same kind of zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of nice details. There's a touches. lot more dynamic shots going on on the PlayStation uh, screen at this point. All right, Raymond Two, The Great Escape. Can we just see the fucking game, please? Yeah, so we'll, we'll just skip a little bit further ahead so we can see some gameplay. Okay. I want to see what these actual games look like side by side here. The colors look a little more vibrant on the N64, interestingly enough. And the gameplay, not much different. Yeah, um, I'm not seeing a whole hell of a lot of difference between the two here. I would uh, say um, you can definitely tell that there's a different, uh, a different approach to how the, they're rendering the backgrounds and the graphical inter- like interface. Like... The, the one on the left looks a little bit more cartoonish. Well, and this whoever's is, playing the PlayStation version sucks. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> suck. But Cause they're just trying to show off all the little water ripple effects. And stuff. I would say this one is a lot closer. Some of the games we're, we're going to see are not as close. Raymond 2 was... Yeah, a- I, I honestly don't see a whole hell of a lot of difference here. I mean, the differences I do see are kind of just mild aesthetic choices that really work fine either way. Well, i got to be honest with you, like... The N64, like the character model of Rayman, looks a little smoother. Um, the the uh, PlayStation One version looks a little more jagged. It yeah, is more, especially pixel- in the shoes. It is a little yeah, bit more the shoes pixelated. Are what in I'm this really one. looking at here, which is interesting, it, it's really de- what I noticed in my research is really depends on who developed the game. 
That is a critical factor. You know where I'm seeing a pretty big difference? Look at the, uh, oh, well, one of them just disappeared. But look at the little Raymond face in the, the corner. Because the PlayStation one, when it if it comes back up, which I'm sure it will, it's a little more, like, jagged. Yeah. Like, this this one on the N64 is way smoother. Yeah. The, the uh, Now that I'm watching these a little bit, too... I'm noticing a bit of a frame rate hitch in the PS1 version that isn't there in the N64 version. <coughs> it seems that the action is a tad smoother. So, I mean, uh, at least for this title, it looks like the N64 did a better well, the job. N64, even with a maybe not as great of a system really in terms do, well, of specs. It had to do with a lot less. Yep. They had to do with a lot less. So sometimes, depending on who developed the game and what, what, what kind of job they did, a lot of, some of the titles, are like you're right, are very comparable it's very hard to distinguish much difference between the two. Well, let's take a look at uh, another game. This is WWF Warzone. Oh, I remember this game. So I do mean, I. Let's go a little bit ahead here. Yeah, I always played uh, Gold Dust because it pissed everybody off to get beat by Gold Dust. See, with this... with Okay, so they're just doing like a split screen here. I mean, once again, I think the Nintendo 64 version is looking better. Yeah, it gets a little bit of an edge here. <coughs> I mean, uh, the uh, the PlayStation version. I mean, it just there's like a lot of like pixel. Yeah, it's shit. extremely it's... pixelated in this version. Okay, now Gold Dust looks pretty goddamn good. Yeah, I mean, the both of the characters are smoother. I would say on the 64, it looks more delayed. It does look like, like playing this game. There's a, a greater delay. Yeah, the, the action seems smoother on the PlayStation. The characters look better on the. But yeah, the I do 64. think 64 on the 64, the characters actually do look. Um, better. I think that Gold Dust looks all right. I mean, like his texturing looks all right. <clears throat> now, l- now the the I think close the, up the, the, the detail on the face looks yeah, way better on the, the, the PlayStation here. there. And if you look at his chest too, the texture for his skin, it almost looks yeah. like he's got shiny sweat there. Yeah, uh, you can't detect that at all on the so, 64. The smoothing, and if you look at the, if they show it again close up on the split screen, the bars and the and the, like look at how the the 1108 on the on the Nintendo is smoother. Like they've got this kind of diffusing smooth filter thrown over the N64 version that smooths out these jagged edges, but it, at the expense of detail. Yeah. See oh, that? wow. Yeah, I mean, that's, that? look that's right night here. and day there in terms right. of, like, the, <coughs> the facial detail going and on. And look uh, at how the PS1 is able to put a crowd behind him and with, with you know... And they have flashes extra. going off. So, I mean, there, there's just a way richer environment. Like, so it seems like the 64 is more scaled down, so it, it, it can compete to some degree. But when you actually get down to the details and the stuff that, like, the... The nice little touches, they're just not there for the 64, and they are there for the PlayStation. Yeah, the, de- the, yeah, the, the fine detail is really what sets it apart here. Let's take a look at Resident Evil 2. Please wait. I don't want to wait. Oh. Terrible voice acting going on. <laughs> What's going on in this? Well, they town? can't hear the voice yeah. acting, so <coughs> keep that in mind. Yeah. Oh, I know that, but I mean, but this one looks like it's got a, kind of the same thing going on. It's diffused and smoothed out on the PlayStation side, but on the N64 side, it looks like the models have more detail. Like I can see that guy's, um, you know, fucking suspender strap <coughs> from this distance, whereas the other one, it just was kind of blurred into his model. Yeah, so the the main difference we're really seeing with these is that the detail is much greater on the PlayStation. The 64, it, it looks okay, but like you said, it just get. I just feel like... When it gets too far, it just blurs it. The thing that, that's kind of strange, though, is like when, when it comes to the 64, like when you look at the characters from like... When you look at the, the edges of the characters, they look way smoother on the 64, but then the, <laughs> the defined details seem to be better on the PlayStation... Yeah, we expect we expect different aesthetic things from video games now. Um, the smoothness is something we really expect now because that's one of the hardest things to do is to have polygon based graphics look smooth. Um, and the the filter that they put over the N sixty four makes it look better to our eyes because it's smoother. But really, if you you know you look at the fine details here, it's clear that there's a winner. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the the PS one is just, I mean, like the texturing and shit is just way beyond what the what I'm seeing on the 64 side. Like when you look at the bricks and stuff, you can really see it. The blood and and detail on the shirts of the zombies um, is just <laughs> way more pronounced here. I mean, they're very similar. You know, it's nitpicking, honestly. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we're here to do. I yeah. mean, it's let's put it this way. But look, yeah, just, yeah, oh, just shit. Could you? The six, yeah, I think this, that was a good. Ex- that was a, that was a really good like comparison. The brick walls next to each other. The si- there. Yeah, we we guys are saying is the PlayStation isn't just leagues ahead, but it's definitely ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just take a look at the at the the texture of the bricks on the PlayStation side versus the sixty four side. I mean, yeah. there's, there's better lighting. There's better shadowing. It's just. It's it just those rich, I mean, richer, finer details. Like, and a lot of times I know it's people, almost like the Nintendo sixty four kind of cheats by sort of blurring things. That's exactly a little. what they do. They put like, that they soft just kinda, filter over. They it. just kind of make everything a little well, blurrier they were, because they're limiting their capacity. They, they only have. I think like the capacity for the sixty four was like sixty four megabytes. So that's it. That's all they can do compared to six hundred fifty on the PlayStation. So the PlayStation has way more to work with yep. in terms of memory capacity. So it's just. They have to cut corners somewhere, and that's and that's where it happened. Let's take a look at uh, Mortal Kombat Four. <laughs> this is the Quan Chi ending, uh, and this is going to be very pronounced. This is going so. This is going to be. This a, is always where like Nintendo sucked fighting like these bigger fighting games. Oh yeah, look at this. I mean, just look. The cutscene difference is amazing. Look at the lighting, the interest. I mean, the sixty four. It's a joke. It doesn't look at all. I mean, it just it's a very generic room and background. I mean, the 3D modeling looks terrible. Yeah. They're very. I mean, like it's way more fluid on oh, the PlayStation. Man, look at the god rays and shit. The glows and stuff like that. That's this is the type of shit that the N64 just wasn't capable of doing, and it's what killed it. I mean, like in terms for me, in terms of graphical <coughs> fidelity, like the the gameplay, not much different. These cutscenes, though, holy fuck! Yeah, because uh, the PlayStation cutscenes looked—I mean, they were totally—they were leagues above what you could actually oh, see in the game. Fully animated and so fluid. Like, look on the left, it looks like they're they're spasming. On yeah. the right, it, it looks—it's just so very. It's very fluid. The audio sounds great. I mean, for the time period, it's just—it looks phenomenal. Yep. So, so yeah, that's night and day. What, what, I mean, that's, that's Mortal Kombat. Not a playable four or three. Uh, four. Uh, four. Four, okay. MK four. So let's take. So a look this at- is later in the development cycle too. So the different, like PlayStation, has really had a chance. So this, this is, is Quake two. Uh, I believe. Quake two. So we're, this right now is the PlayStation. So we're looking at the PlayStation right now. So pretty fluid FPS action. Yeah, I fucking love Quake, man. That's why I picked it for one of the comparisons. I'm like, Quake is definitely a game. I mean, it looks kind of poopy on console compared to what it looked like on PC. But what? Oh, do you do? Well, yeah. I mean, nine. I mean, Trent Reznor did, did the soundtrack for Quake oh, Two, dude. Yeah, it was so good. I mean, it was just dun, it, dun, a, dun, a magical dun, dun, dun. fucking game. That's doom. If you've never played fucking Quake, so here we see it on N sixty four. Highly with recommend you play it. Expansion pack. So this is uh, the PS, or this is the so Nintendo. Look, as you see the shotgun, I mean, this this action is nowhere near as fluid. <laughs> We're seeing the same cheat here. Um, this is the N sixty four, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where they're, they're, they're using the same cheat. So it's a uh, very similar looking, but everything's got that soft, diffused filter over it to hide the lack of uh, texture detailing. And as you saw in the uh, PlayStation, look at that. Yep. Look, at, look at him shooting. And the lighting too is is something that's really pronounced. And but different. it's just that interesting pink kind of glow that you've got down there. But the sixty four couldn't do that. But there's no delay in the firing too. Like the, you, you see the firing rate. He's it's very fluid, and when it, when it hits, it's more realistic. On the yeah. sixty four was like this very delayed jerky motion when he would shoot. Oh, it definitely was uh, having trouble doing this fully three D environment, where the uh, PlayStation's handling it real well here. Looks great. And once again, the soft filter. <coughs> I mean, whatever. For console ports of Quake, they look pretty playable. I mean, yeah, I think either version would be playable, but I'd rather I wouldn't. Play. Uh, I wouldn't turn them down. Um, I wouldn't turn. I, I wouldn't play the fucking. Well, uh, I, I have a clear favorite. Version, yeah, though. I have a clear favorite. Though. I'll, give me the PlayStation. <laughs> version. The lighting is just. I mean, really, the lighting is the difference here. Oh, but looking at also looking at the enemies. I mean, just look at them. Uh, on, so on the PlayStation, it was far superior. Yep. Still got a few more comparisons to go through. This is um, Mission Impossible. <coughs> I never played this on either console, so. 
But yeah, you're seeing the uh, look at that sun, and the oh yeah, the fucking what do they call those? The lens flare, man. <laughs> that's that's <coughs> directed by J.J. Oh, yeah, Abrams. The environment. <laughs> oh, way man. more a way more limited environment. Yeah, this is just obvious. Everything's just very like like I said that, that that polygon feel to it on the sixty four side. Oh yeah. I mean, they're both pretty fucking polygony, but like the lighting just kills it on the PS. Like, look at it, dude. But look how fluid the oh, yeah. the, the uh, on the PlayStation side. You can just see the fluidity of the the camera. animation. Yeah, the camera and the camera. It really feels more like a movie. It, just, it feels like you're moving around. You're, you're having different shots. Like it was, it was, they really planned the shots. That's why PlayStation moving to this like cutting edge hardware was such a smart thing. Because look at games now. They're all like that. They're all cinematic. Oh, they I mean, all look, look better. Look than at movies. that shrub and, and tree behind him on the sixty four. It looks awful. This Individual is, leaves and shit. And this is just a flat mat fucking. Uh, you know, fucking uh, what? what oh yeah, that fucking look at all that fog in the background. So they're not even rendering the background yep. at all. Using fog to hide detail. Oh my god, that guy's face is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're seeing the same tricks here. PlayStation has the uh, ability to render the snow as well, so that adds a little touch to it. That you I mean, this see. almost looks like Me- uh, Metal Gear Solid, dude. Yeah, a little bit, uh, probably a little bit less. I would say it's a little more platformy, but. It's close. Yeah, it's it, well. I mean, in terms of greatness, I don't think they're anywhere. I don't think they're comparable. But I think in terms of like, kind of like how they looked, very similar aesthetic. I wouldn't be surprised if this was was just a rip off. It might have been, yeah. <coughs> so um, we have yet more comparisons to go through. Let's do it. Uh, this is uh, we're gonna have to look at two separate videos here. This is, uh, we're gonna look at two different versions of Duke Nukem. One is Duke Nukem Time to Kill for PS1, and one is Duke Nukem 64 for, uh, the 64. Okay. So this is. This is, this is PS1. This is Duke Nukem Time to Kill. (coughs) I never played this either. I've never played it, but, uh, you know. I played Duke on the PC. Well, oh, a, sweet. a major difference between these two, I can tell you, um, is they don't have audio, so they, they won't uh, recognize this difference. But it's that this one had a, a, sound, a full soundtrack. On the 64, you had, you had the, the title screen had the Duke Nukem theme, but that's it. Yeah. So CD quality music throughout. On the 64, it's just like, nope. You get intro music, and that's it. Then it's just running around this game, killing shit. So yeah, this is a weird uh, Duke Nukem game, third-person perspective. Pretty strange. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking that. I've got bowls of steel. I loved, I loved tipping the hookers, or the, the strippers in, in uh, Duke Nukem. Oh, dude, some of the best... Shake it, baby. Oh, yeah, dude. Some of the best ventral harassment is the famously the Duke Nukem. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've got bowls. I've, I've, got, I've got, got bowls of steel. <laughs> yeah, this looks pretty goddamn good, <coughs> honestly. For, for a like, PS1 game. I think this was 98 or something, so it's... it's later later in the development cycle. So, so uh, let's compare that to... Taking a leak. Duke Nukem 64. Yeah, take, take a piss, oh, Duke. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, man. Shake it, baby. So this is Duke Nukem 64 here. It was just a blue screen. Then yeah, black. that's all it That's was. all it did. <laughs> that was all it ever did. Put controller that fucking pack. controller pack in, man. Make sure the controller pack is in. You can't fuck with it. Put it in before 3D you start realms, the goddamn dude. game. Duke Nukem. So the 64. only time you got music in this game. Yeah, maybe I'll just turn the so music on. Fucking- time for Duke Nukem 64. Come get some. All right, come on. Let's play the fucking game. Just a really boring text intro. So, yeah, uh, no third-person perspective here. Back to original Duke Nukem first person, but way, way lower Uh, fidelity all the way around. This looks like Doom. It looks like a really shitty Doom port. Yep. Looks like a Doom fucking mod or some shit. Yeah, it doesn't look that good, dude. Pretty bad. 
<coughs> Flat it, it, fire. Yeah, no light coming off that, the fire. That is a dumpster fire, and that's how I feel about this. Game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it literally is a dumpster fire. Yeah, this looks. Awesome. Oh, the enemies are so fucking jarringly bad. The oh, aiming. what is that? Jump? Why are they? Why are they floating in the air? They have jetpacks, dude. Well, they look yeah, like they, they were walking, though. Yeah, the jetpacks do not look fluid at all. I mean, Doom did this better years earlier. Yeah. This just feels like a real, like Paul said, a really shitty Doom mod. Oh, that enemy looked just. Man, he just looked flat. Yeah, a lot of the enemies in this are just. Uh, <clears throat> they just like, like weird, sprites. like sentient cardboard cutouts. Yep, they're sprites because they couldn't render them. They didn't have the power to, so they put the flat enemies on there. That's why it looks so doomy because that's how Doom got around it. You know, the flat yep. enemies. Oh, even. Yeah, this just feels like a Doom game, dude. Even that sound effect that just played. Yeah, that was like a Doom sound <laughs> it's effect. It's like an Imp or a fucking uh, soldier, dude. Yeah, this is a Doom ripoff, for sure. Doesn't feel anything like Duke Nukem at all. They're using Doom sound effects, for sure. And like I said, there's there's no yeah, sound uh, let me uh, Let me just go ahead and uh, t- play this for people. For some <laughs> I want to let them. Let me just go it's, back so you guys. It's unsettling to play a game like this. Let me just let them hear all the right. stuff that's being stolen from Doom here. I mean, it's weird to play any sort of fucking game, the, like like an FPS, and have no fucking soundtrack. It's just a bad idea that you should not have made it for the system. It, it wasn't ready for it. Hold on. Shit, because they're about to play a bunch of Doom sounds. That sound there, the enemy dumped. So, yeah, um, this comes across more like a Doom game than a Duke Nukem game. I would be willing to bet that this is just a reskinned Doom. That when they developed this, they just took Doom and reskinned it, put some Duke Nukem voice lines in. Because, yeah, that's just. That sound is like the fucking, what you call it, those big pink barren demons dying. That brrr, I, I, oh, the, uh, I'll never forget it. So let's <clears throat> take a look at this is uh, Mortal Kombat N64. Long play as uh, Scorpion. This so is, this is a uh, Mortal Kombat one. This is Mortal Kombat four. Four, but this is gameplay. Okay, but we already looked at the we already looked at the cut scene. Let's just see how the <laughs> gameplay stacks up. So this is on the sixty four here. Oof, pretty herky jerky. <clears throat> But I mean, you know, it's it's still fluid enough. I mean, it is jerky, but it's definitely an improvement over the. Uh, the screen super- shake is really disconcerting. Yeah, that is really the, bad. B- the, the top top bottom bounce that happens every time. It's like there, hits it's somebody. like there's someone with epilepsy filming yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, look at it. Every time the perspective shifts, the fucking screen shakes up and down. Oh, you know what it probably was was the rumble pack bullshit, dude. You think? I think that's what it was. Because that was a big thing in these games. It was like, oh look. Let's see the fucking. <laughs> oh, no, horrible! Dude. I'm on fire. <laughs> that is a terrible fatality. <laughs> the classic matchup. Yeah, dude, the classic matchup: Scorpion versus Sub Zero. Sub Zero is really generic when, when he hits him. It's just like it's it's gory, but it's it's not really authentic gore. It's just blood just shoots. It's like it's like blood. Uh, well, blood. let's see how the PS uh, One handles it. <clears throat> Willing to bet the lighting is way better. I mean, probably. Let's see if we have a stupid shaky cam. Nope. Yeah, it, I think it was. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they do. Oh, yeah, but that's I just. Uh, I guess that's just how the game is designed. Yep. Just yep. a poor choice for. I mean, Mortal Kombat Four was kind of when the <clears throat> series declined for a while, you know. So. Pretty similar. Um, I really don't see a whole hell of a lot of yeah. difference here. Why does he keep bending Liu Kang's leg back? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's fucking weird. The fuck is that? That's how Let's, he rolls. Let's see the fatality. Yeah, we'll get to it. I in would a say this is one of the one of those games where you don't see much of a difference in the actual gameplay. I would say the camera is less shaky. It's not as jarring, but it's still it's still there. Yeah, I still don't like the fucking. The Screen blood shape, effects are, are, are present in both. It just doesn't look good. It's they did blood better than the. I mean, previous the blood games. the blood looks better in this one. It it splatters out like towards the screen and shit. Yeah, I do like that, but I, I don't like every time you hit. They're just being blood. Yeah, I, I like blood for lame. specific. You know. All right, problems. so let's see the finisher here. <laughs> All right. All 
dying. Right. Really <laughs> dumb. Really bad. At least he actually kills him, though. He doesn't just <coughs> run around on fire and fall over. I'm know? on fire! Here's a little side-by-side in case you uh, didn't have enough to determine there. I guess it's not going to do side-by-side. This is 64. awful. Neat. Sweet. Okay. Damn it, why don't you just show us side by side, you son of a bitch? <laughs> Damn, reptile melted that butch's head. I thought it was just a skull under that mask anyway, though, with Scorpion. Uh, well, yeah, that's Why's a good point. Why he got a bloody, meaty-looking skull now? <laughs> I don't know. Because the it was needed for the fatality to work. Got it. Um, let's see here. Uh, fighting force. Where the fuck did that go? Well, whatever. We've done enough. Uh, let's just take a look at one more uh, comparison here. Oh wait. Um. <coughs> yeah. Reptile wins. So. Fatality. Uh, I- there was another game Scotty pulled called Fighting Force, but it seems like one of the videos didn't pull for some reason. So let's just take a look at Toy Story 2 for PS1 and N64. I think I remember this one. Shitty little platformer. Yeah. So here's the PS1. So PS1. So this must be, once again, later in the development cycle because th- these both of these games look way better than a lot of the ones we've looked at in terms of polygons and PS1. <coughs> Looking around, the, so that that's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, you're zooming in. That's definitely a cool effect. You've got, an, a, you've got a genuine 3D environment here that you can go into first person and look around. That's pretty revolutionary. So for here's a, the 64 version, got that same too. thing. It's pretty neat. I don't um, know, this game looks pretty cool. Not saying a whole hell of a lot of difference between the two here. I mean, uh, some of the issues we've talked about in the other ones, it looks like the, uh, strangely, the PS1 version looks a little brighter, which usually the Nintendo versions look brighter. Yeah. Yeah, this is a game, and you don't, you're not, we're not seeing the huge differences, but, um, besides what we've already complained about. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't it's know. It's a cartoony game, so you're not going to see a lot of the detail differences that you see in the more realistic yeah, games. Yeah, it looks pretty comparable on both systems. I yeah. don't think there's a whole And like I said, there, there are some here. that are, like, like like Raymond 2, that are really comparable, and you're kind of like, meh. Like, uh, the PS1, I think the N64 has a better character model for Buzz, because he looks kind of like a midget in the PS1 yeah, it looks version. like a robot or something. <laughs> Yeah, like they need to fucking. He looks kind of. <laughs> uh, well, well, you know what? It, you know what it is too. It's that platformers. The N sixty four is actually really good for platformers because that, that, that's what Mario is. Oh yeah. So there's certain things that the N sixty four it really lends itself to. That's why when you see certain games, it's like it feels they feel the same like Raymond two platformer. So it could really handle it. It did. It did a pretty comparable job. Maybe not exactly the same, but no one that played it on sixty four really lost out. Is right. the point. So last time we uh, we compared these two the two systems the Genesis and the uh, N sixty four one of the things we compared was uh, the music we don't have a lot of direct musical comparisons here but uh, we do have an article called What's Wrong with Music on the N sixty four over on IGN. Well, here. Here, here's the reason why no, it, because look it's not a contest. <laughs> you signed up right. Guys, don't mess with me here. You signed up. You want to see the Jordan Peterson gauntlet, don't you? I mean, do you also want to see the 2,000-plus exclusive posts we have? I'm not going to tell you that's all content, but a lot of it is. We have a lot of great episodes just like this one. You enjoying this episode? Guys, it's really simple. Go over to Patreon and join. You have a ton of content. Go watch it right now. Go watch all of our content. Go do it. I don't know what you're waiting for. What's I got to say to you? Go do it. The long and the short of it, I mean, you can read, read some of this article. This is from 1998. Yeah, if you just want to... Um, yeah, but, I mean, this is this is from back in the, the day when this I mean, was actually good, a thing. There's some good, uh, good points it brings up. Um, so the, the, the music on the N64 was considered to be inferior to the 
the PlayStation. Oh, it's not even. It, considered. It's a it's, it it's a CD base versus a cartridge base. Right. right. So the N sixty four, if they wanted to put really good CD quality music in theirs, they could. They had the but but they had to sacrifice space that could be used for graphical fidelity or something else in the game. Where and and the PlayStation had that same economy problem, but they had way more space to work with. So putting CD quality music in a PS1 game wasn't really going to affect the quality of the game. Whereas on N64, if you did that, you'd have a fucking slideshow. Just basically read, read the first question of this, TJ, because I think this is kind of the, the crux of what we're talking about. First question? The, so this here? So IGN64. Uh, graphics aside, one of Factor 5's strength was always the sound. And if I take a hard look at most of the N64 games at the moment, the music is not up to par with what you could and can st- and still can hear on the Super NES. For example, Act Razor, Final Fantasy, Mana, Zelda, Castlevania, everyone knows those melodies. Yep. But with some exceptions, most of the stuff we hear on the N64 nowadays sounds weak-breasted and uninventive. What's going on? So basically, this guy is saying, "Why? I mean, why has why have we taken a step back in terms of music exactly. from the previous console?" Right, and it says here the Super NES had a sound chip. The N sixty four doesn't have a dedicated sound chip, and that's just how it is. So, why would they do that? Uh, here's why: the N sixty four shares its workload with a co processor. Actually, let me rephrase that: the whole machine does it because you can uh, also make music with the CPU. It just seems that at the moment, most people are preoccupied with pumping out cool graphics, and that's also what most gamers want. And the more graphics you do on the N64, the less performance you have left over for sound. With the Super NES, uh, you knew that you could do all this, and then you still had a sound chip to handle the music. On the N64, sound eats up performance. So basically, graphics took precedence over sound. So basically, uh, the, the 64 made a deal with the devil and said... Hey, we'll sacrifice our our sound for better graphics. Uh, Nintendo just made a huge blunder going sticking with cartridges, yep. and and, the, and and like I said, the architecture they had honestly, it's what it's what the systems do now. They don't. I mean, like, I mean, systems have dedicated you know graphics. I mean, the sad today. thing is though that they sacrificed their sound for the graphics, and they still couldn't even compete graphically <laughs> because they they were competing in a con- in, in a cartridge based market. <laughs> well, I, well, actually, well, I actually misspoke. Now, what they have for most modern consoles, they have dedicated graphics cards. That's right. what I meant to say. So now it's not the, the workload is not just being shared by the CPU, which yeah. clearly does not work. And that's why they did not. I think they wisely abandoned that. And the GameCube, the follow up to the sixty four, was CD based. Yeah, I mean that's why they invented graphics cards because graphics on the PC were getting so out of control. Yeah, a- 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 AGP and yeah. then PCI Express. Yeah, Voodoo. I think the first card they released was called Voodoo Extreme. Let's talk about another way that the PlayStation kind of ate the uh, the N64's lunch, which is in the sheer number of games. Because the total number of games released in North America on the PS1 was 1,100, 1,100 games. I mean, roughly, give or take. Roughly 1,100. Which is a um, Sony, this is because Sony encouraged third party development. They basically told developers, hey, if you make a game for our system, we'll put it out there. Another win for Sony, by the way. Uh, N64, and you know, you can't really blame Nintendo for this because it worked so well against Sega. They wanted to develop a lot more, most of their shit in house or have someone that they were closely working with. To <laughs> it's develop called, it. it's called basically uh, what they did was first and second party development. Yeah, first party development and second so party. So, first party, if you don't know, is basically Nintendo develops it. Right. Second so party Mario is. is a first party yeah. Game. Is so Nintendo party is basically gives someone the blessing. You own part it, of know? that company or are very closely associated with that company, like rare affiliated. Was one that yeah, Rare right. was the big one. And third party is basically like, we don't have nothing to do with you, but if you make a game for our system. We'll we'll yeah. put it out there, whatever. And the PlayStation made it s- simple for people to develop games on their console. Relatively like, simple, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, not for us, but <laughs> in terms of like game development, they made it easy. To- so as a consequence, the total number of games released on the N64 was 387. So a fraction. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, that hey. translates to selection. Wait. Quality, uh, you know, you could say quality over quantity, but... There, are, you know, of those eleven hundred games, maybe that maybe if you look overall the Nintendo library, I don't know. <coughs> 
But uh, well, there was more of a chance that there was going to be a game you liked on the PlayStation. So let's take a look here. This is uh, from Metacritic. This is just a list of the games released by by score for the PS One, right? Yeah. So these are all like uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater right, Two, yeah. Tekken Three, Gran Turismo, Final Fantasy uh, Nine. Chrono Cross, Metal Gear Solid, Gran Turismo 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Wipeout XL, just on and on. Uh, tons and tons of games, just page and page and page. I mean, these, look at all these titles that are, ha- that are in the green, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot for Nintendo. Too. I'm sure there are. And then the even these... But a lot of these were third-party developed. Even these yellow the ones difference. are still good, you know, well rated and shit. And the, and the funny thing is, is because Nintendo drove a lot of these developers into the arms of Sony. I mean, you get to 171 games before you start to get to the stuff that's not great reviewed. Right. Um. Let's see how Nintendo does. Um. Obviously, a lot of fucking very popular, successful games for Nintendo 64. Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, Majora's Mask, Mario 64, Paper Mario, Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Wave Race 64, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Mario Tennis, etc., etc. A lot of, a lot of but look games. how quickly we're getting yep. into the yellow here. After 51 games, we're into the yellow, and at, at 69 games, well, we're into the red. It's pretty much just like this. The stuff Nintendo had a hand in, for the most part, people kind of enjoyed or liked, and then a lot of the stuff they had... So once again, let's compare it. It took we we were at 172 titles before we got to a badly reviewed title, versus 69 titles before we knew a badly reviewed title. I mean, so yeah, I mean, uh, well, well, here's the thing: as a you can only have your best developers on so many games. As a matter of percentage, Nintendo probably did have more good games if you just say what percentage of the library, but. The fact that PS1 allowed more developers to do more games means that overall there's more good games on the PS1 than there are on the N64. Well, like, like I just pointed out, I mean, look, the best, I mean, Nintendo has a limited number of people that are going to develop in the uh, games. So all the best developers are working on the games that you love, like, oh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time, really great game. Super but this. Yeah, but there's only so many of these people that are going to make these great games. At a certain point, if you have in-house development, it's going to eventually take a back seat, or it's going to be, well, we've done all our major titles for this system, so now we're kind of out of ideas. I just remember I was never at a loss for a PS4 game that I... That I the, uh, PS1. I mean, the fact that they have so many titles that they've kept in house and made sure the quality is good has really preserved them throughout the years. But, but, but it, 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 it did cost them the first place position in this market at this point in their history. I want that selection. I, I don't care if it's a bunch of shit games on it. I, I'm willing to risk that. Well, it's like it's like the Switch. The big problem with the Switch. I mean, I know to switch gears a bit is. Is the same thing with Nintendo, is that they're so closed off to third-party development. You guys want to take a look at some of the marketing for this stuff? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Um, here's some commercials. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the N64 commercials first. Um, here we go. Uh, yeah, here so, we go. <laughs> this is a great commercial. Yeah, I, I this is a commercial for Super Smash Brothers. And this kind of Nintendo maybe trying to break away a little from their, uh, you know... Their kitty friendly shit. I mean, Smash Brothers is not like some hardcore adult game, but you know, this was kind of like, hey, let's give the Nintendo shit some attitude a little bit. Well, they needed a fighting game. Yeah, so they decided to take all their classic characters and just have them beat the shit out of each other. Pretty smart, you know. And I mean, huge hit for them too, dude. It, it, still it, is. it was big news just a few days ago that they were putting out the uh, new one on the Switch. It's Paper Mario, I think. Another great game. Uh, yeah, this is a great one. <clears throat> uh, you know, you know where this franchise really started to shine, though, for me was uh, the GameCube. Uh, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door on the GameCube. That is a good game. Right? Monkey Attack! I'm going to go ahead and t- put a little bit of volume on this. Find out in 
Super Mario! Rated E. This is a really great game because it, it recognizes the weaknesses of this system and actually incorporates it. Oh, yeah. And, and turns weakness into strength. So here's, uh, this is just an ad for Mario 64, which, by the way... It was bundled with most of the... Uh, yeah, a, a pr- crazy good transition for Mario 2 from a 2D a to game. a 3D platform. A really great replayable game. I mean, obviously the graphics and shit don't hold up. Yeah, I mean, really you know, whatever. Game. I've got to be honest with you, when it comes to platformers... Especially 3D platformers. Yeah. In, uh, Mario 64 for me is still the gold standard in terms of playability and smoothness. I mean, and it shows like there's still. I mean, people I, I don't know if it's the gold it. standard at this point, but I think it's the. It's the template. This upon is the which template. Yes. Every fucking and, 3D platformer is now based. And GoldenEye, not the sh- not, not the short change, it is pretty much one of the best games. To, I mean, even to this day, to go play with a group of people. Yeah, I mean, it's a little hard to play it now that you've gotten used to modern FPS controls because it is clunky as. Oh, I think fuck they've, yeah. they've done some updates to it and shit. Now this is one of my favorites. Uh, right here. Love this fucking game. Whilst thou run <laughs> or fly. I mean, you really can't fly in it. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, what can you what can you even say about Zelda? I mean, I mean what a brilliant they, fucking franchise. They've never I mean, as far as I This is the best. Zelda I haven't played game every single fucking Zelda game, but as far as I can tell, they've never put out an outright bad fucking Zelda game, so yeah, this was one of the franchises that I was always sad about missing out on because I never really had the Nintendo consoles. I mean, I played the first Zelda, but sure. I never had a Super NES. I never had an N64, so I kind of missed yeah. out, especially on, on the 3D zones. A lot of the times, like, people who hold out will end up getting the console just to play the new fucking Zelda games. It's like, fuck. Yeah, I fuck you, it. Nintendo. And there's a reason why. I mean, they're just fucking great. Uh, and that one in particular, I think, is... Really, just phenomenal. The only one I've ever played through all the way is Majora's Mask, and I fucking loved it. Yeah, I mean it's base. I mean it, it's pretty similar in terms of controls and shit. Not tone though. No, the tone is much darker. I feel like uh, this is, of course, Mario Kart 64. I mean, this looks kind of pixely, but uh, I mean these these commercials are fucking old. So it's like, what are you? Yeah, gonna I mean do? these are old commercials, whatever. But yeah, but Mario Kart, another great fucking franchise. Great title, man. Salty you could ass have, game to play with. Oh yeah, too. yeah. Me and Scotty would get in this thing where we'd try to we'd each try to get ten wins on a row on each other. Like that was like the ultimate. Like fuck you, I just beat you ten times in a row. And yeah. like a lot of times we'd get to like nine and then lose and. You know, I never liked these Mario Party games. It's no, crazy. they were they were they were just. I mean, yeah, I was like little kid shit. I don't know, dude. A lot of adults like to get together and play. Sure, I mean, like, I don't know. I guess they can be fun, but I don't know. It was never my thing. Fun, but, uh, mostly annoying. See, I, I like Star Fox sixty four, but I was never any goddamn. Oh, dude, game. I beat the, I beat this game so many fucking times. Never played sixty four, but I I beat. The <coughs> Oh, dude, and I fucking beat on the hard, the fucking, the left path beat me with the fucking Venom, the hard So, way. you want to use your gold and silver skills in a 3D world? So this is kind of, uh, Pokemon shit. This is Pokemon Snap, maybe? Well, here's uh, the thought. I don't think so. Oh, Stadium. Now you can get Pokemon Stadium 2, the yeah. only place you can upload your Game Boy Pokemon on your N64 so kind of cool and battle thing. it over. Yeah, you could upload the, the, the Game Boy Pokemon onto the 64. Well, they've got that skills. With a lot of games. Saving for the game. Kind of Pokemon Stadium things. 2, rated E for games where you could upload your save data from your Game Boy or whatever the fuck. Advance. And I don't know what the hell's going on here. Anyway, let's take a look at some uh, PlayStation commercials. See what the kind of tonal difference is. I mean, this looks pretty different already. Yeah. PlayStation sticking with the Sega model, it looks like. Doing it a little better than Sega ever did it, though. Uh oh, the monkeys have taken over the truck. <coughs> They're going bananas. Ape You better get them. Uh oh, this got you in some trouble at one yeah, point, it. Paul. Cut, cut my channel, man. <laughs> Christmas bullshit. Oh, it's like a yeah. This is a this is a pretty bad army game. men. I think it's called or some shit. Yet again, just edgy bullshit. I get it. Nutcracker. Right? Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Army men, sergeants, heroes. Rated This was kind of a cool game. I remember this. Oh, dude. PlayStation game console. I remember fucking Stevie would play the shit out of this game, dude. So you could get that for both systems. Yeah, army men. That's what it is. Has no form. Shit. Fear has no name. 
but it now fear. fear has an address. Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PlayStation. The game. Man, awesome I've game. played that You're game from the beginning to end at least three or four times. So. <clears throat> this is a big thing. Of, uh, this guy, this character they have right here, the guy dressed as Crash Bandicoot, was a really big. Oh yeah, this was a huge marketing campaign. Yeah, the snarky dude in the Crash Bandicoot suit. Yeah, yeah, he'd go around and he'd fuck with you. people and, yeah. Yeah, he's like, I'm coming to ruin Christmas dinner or whatever the fuck, you know. I shit in the tomatoes. I don't fucking know. As you can see, all, all, you know, the kid fucking with all the old funny duddies. Yeah, yeah rebel against parents. authority, kids. <laughs> yeah, playing the PlayStation is like stealing a car and doing donuts. I mean, this does look pretty badass for PlayStation <laughs> graphics. PlayStation. I think too much emphasis is placed on graphics these days, dude. Well, these days, yeah. I mean, even in these days, too, No, though. no, you're wrong. In these days, graphics were everything, TJ. This is cool board. I know, that's I what I'm saying. I played shit out of this game. This game was tight, man. <laughs> so you could do crazy shit. Really just trying to sell the realism of the game. Like, it's Say so what, real. man, the fucking... The only... Whoa. <laughs> Damn, dude. edgy shit, dude. Cool borders, yeah. Stick a fork in your fucking head. To play cool borders. There's a new adventure hero in games. Oh, God. Oh, duh. No. Uh, I, I thought it was Gex Switch. for a second. Climbs, pushes, stops, the hell is this? Jumps his way uh, this is a Mario 64 rip off attempt. I see. And it is. They can have 500 levels. It still isn't going to be that fucking good. Terrible game. I run this game one time. It's just so boring. I, yeah, oh, Croc, yes, yeah, <laughs> oh, Windows 95. You'd be fucking wasting your money on that. You know, we should system. talk about uh, one of the worst games ever put out for PlayStation. I didn't actually pull the video for it, but um, I can I can just kind of like bring it over. Let's just take a, let's take a quick fucking look <laughs> at uh, the real fucking worst ripoff of uh, of Mario. Oh god, Bubsy. fuck you, dude. Bubsy 3D. I mean, this is fucking ass. Is, and, and you know what the sad thing? There's no excuse for this game looking as bad as it does either. I mean, the we've PS1 seen hardware. we've seen what the PS1 is capable of. This is what happens when you let anyone develop. This is like the neg This is the drawback of letting anyone or, develop one of the a game worst for games your ever developed and released. So look at all of the things that we've said that made the PlayStation One look better and play better than the N64 in a lot of these games. Gone. The detail in the background gone. The use of interesting lighting, there's none. It's one <laughs> flat light on horribly monochromatic backgrounds that you can barely tell are polygons at Dude, all. When, when I played Bubsy on the Super Nintendo, it was far superior and looked better. Oh, yeah. Like, the three, the 3D version of Bubsy was rightfully, I think, the last. I, I, I don't recall it ever anymore being developed. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did, but after releasing this, they, this whole fucking uh, development house should have been sold. It should have been auctioned off and everybody fired and fined for making such a, an abomination. Just close down, dude. Just give it up, man. This is just awful. this is like... This is sadder than sad for a PS1 game. You I have mean, no idea. You're how trying to like, like you're trying to jump on these enemies, and it's you have no idea where you're jumping. Like, there's no way. Like, this person doing it, if you were to play this game, it would not. It would you would not do that. You would your jumps would be totally fucking. Far the off. reason that these early fucking 3D platformers worked or didn't was the camera, and you can tell that the camera in Bubsy 3D, and I can attest to oh, this because I played this piece of shit. It is like. I don't know, dude. It's like somebody with epilepsy is controlling the fucking camera or some shit. It's horrible. It's overly sensitive in, uh, in ways that you don't want it to be and not sensitive enough in ways that... I mean, it's just hard to explain how the, hard it the is. Back, well, the background... You know what I think with this game it is? Nothing's cohesive. The jumping, it's not... The mechanics, like... It's like if you've ever played a game with shitty jumping... It's like a really delayed jump, and you're trying to jump on the enemy, and it, it, the perspective is wrong. It's too floaty. It requires you to be too precise to land these precise platformer jumps. It's a. Te it, this is like one of the biggest disappointments. A in technical terms of and graphical ever. fucking nightmare. I mean, just dude. look at this. I mean, everything is just so flat and ugly, and there's no texture yep. to anything. It's All of the things, like, like God I said, damn nasty the PS1, looking. One, a standout console graphically, are gone here. I just this looks know. worse than any fucking N64 game that oh. was released. Well, maybe not any. <laughs> yeah, Super. you know what? Pull up Superman 64. Yeah, show TJ. a little bit of Superman 64, because <laughs> I think that that's widely considered to be the worst game released on the phone. Uh, so this is... Um, 
Let's talk about... Yeah, we can do Superman 64. Now, it doesn't look as bad as this, but the controls are just fucking terrible. It's uh, basically an unplayable game. Um, if anyone wants to have an idea of just how unplayable it is, go watch the uh, Angry Video Game Nerd uh, do his review of it. But uh, <coughs> let's the just... fly through rings game! I mean, like, these rings... I mean, this guy is making it look like it's actually doable. It isn't. But, like... This is an expert player yeah, who's this, spent this is some guy who's actually dedicated time to learning how to play this, and even he's not looking too graceful. But this is about as good as you could possibly do this. Like, the flight controls in this game are just, like, beyond broken. He yeah. Controls like a play fucking the, duck. Go play this on an emulator and you'll see. Been shot. It's like, you will miss most of these rings. Oh, yeah. The, this like, even this guy who's obviously, like, practiced this and is, like, somewhat good at it has missed a couple rings since he started playing this shit. Oh, yeah. And, by the way, who the fuck wants to play a Superman game where all you do is fly through fucking rings and throw <coughs> cars? So, like, and, the, by the way, uh, you have almost no time to do any of this. Yeah, I mean, so like, you don't know what you're doing, you just, you lose. And then, guess what you have to do then? You have to go back and fly through all those rings again to get to this part. Yep. And see, he completed the mission, but you still have to wait for the timer. <laughs> like, why? You want to save your friends? Solve my maze. It's not a maze, first of all. Like, it's rings. The controls are a maze. <laughs> yeah. They're not amazing, though. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you got to give it to them. It doesn't look as bad as Bubsy 3D, but it is terrible. Yeah, and, uh, like, I mean, it doesn't look great. This, I mean, it doesn't look great. It's, it's, it's that fog background where it's red. Yeah, if you really want to have a better idea, either go download an emulator of the game and try to fucking yeah, play it. That's all you can do is Or try. just go watch the Angry Video Game Nerd doing his review of this because he know, destroys he, it. He destroys like said, this, this game. This, this is a person that's got probably hundreds of hours of practice on this stupid game. There's no other way. <laughs> Dude. I don't know why someone's existence is sad enough that they want to do well, that. People speed run this shit, you know. So it's like yeah. I mean, wanna, I guess it's good, I guess it's kind of impressive. Like yeah, he look, saw, he, he just missed a ring by a wide berth there, he probably because he knew it's not even worth trying. Yeah, he's to missed get a the couple rings. I mean, he's missed three or four. These, yeah, these hairpin turns are just impossible, so he just skips them. I mean, you have to remember too. The N sixty four controller is a really awkward controller, and to try to do make well, these that's kind of the next turns, thing I wanted to, to talk yeah. about was uh, just kind of take a look at the controllers and the overall look of the system. Uh, let's start with the controllers. Now, obviously, the the PlayStation controller uh, from console to console has not undergone a tremendous amount of um, evolution. But it's one of the um, best. It's look besides the Super Nintendo. It's the best controller design I mean, out there. You can actually see a lot of influence from the Super Nintendo controller oh, in this. Oh, and okay. I mean, well, they obvi- started developing yeah. it as a Super Nintendo controller. Nintendo right. Controller, so, so they kind of went with a very similar thing here. You know, uh, they used um, shapes instead of uh, letters, but you still have the whole uh, left right bumper thing. You got the, you know, uh, analog joystick. Later they added some. Um, some uh, there's some joysticks to it. They got the analog directional pad there. Now, uh, start and select, you know, and four buttons <laughs> there, two buttons on the top, or maybe there was maybe there was uh, two. Uh, was there, was there uh, two left and right bumpers? No, no. The original, there was, there was just, just an L and an R. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they kept it basic and simple. And, so I mean, this is worked. essentially the same as the 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 the, the Super Nintendo controller. So while PlayStation was stealing a design from Nintendo that worked, Nintendo was going a little batshit. <laughs> well, the ergonomics on the PS1 controller were way better than yeah, the Super Nintendo. The right yellow there. C buttons, uh, good luck pressing those fucking things when you're playing a game. Yeah, yeah. Th- those were a terrible addition to this controller, and the fact that so many games used them <coughs> was just kind of sad. Like, the, loco- the location of that joystick in the middle is preposterous. It's it terrible. Work. Um, there's no goddamn reason on earth that little middle, like, why is that <coughs> fucking middle prong or whatever the fuck you'd call it there? Like, why do we need a hand? Like, who ha- are there people with three hands playing this fucking system? Way too I mean, busy. The joystick was a good idea. Where they put it and how they executed it did not work at all. Nope. They did change the game with that analog joystick, though, because the next, the next 
uh, console generation, everybody had dual language. Yeah, I mean, of course, they fucking had the, you know, the next, I mean, even the original PS1 eventually introduced a controller with a fucking joystick. Mm -hmm. But the range of motion on their joystick was terrible, too. You can see it's got kind of like an octagonal housing that it's in. So you didn't have full (laughs) kind of 360 smooth feeling range of motion. It was That joystick also, uh, oftentimes it would either become so loose that you barely had to touch it to do anything, and then it was way too sensitive, or it would lock up. The only game that I think that this controller worked well with was Mario 64. I agree. Um, those C buttons were actually useful in it for doing quick perspective uh, the C well, you know what? The C buttons were pretty useful in Ocarina of Time, too, because there was like your inventory it, so, yeah. shit. You know, I will say there's a couple games, but they're all developed by Nintendo. All the Nintendo games like that were good, the really good ones made good use of this controller. Every other one, it was just re- really awkward. I mean, it, it, whatever, maybe there was good use made of the controller, but like the controller itself, the design is fundamentally weird. Oh, it's fundamentally flawed. Um, it's not a great design. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with it. Um, it's not the worst controller ever for a, a video game system. Far from it, but... But it's not great. And after Nintendo... I mean, like, once again, Sony basically stole your fucking controller design. Well, talk about the ergonomics, too. Like, yeah. the original fucking uh, Super Nintendo controller was great, but holding one now, it's not, it's not great. It was too small... Holding it for long periods of time, like this one with the palm, like the big, you know, outcroppings for your palms to wrap around. Right. So much nicer to hold and shit. Um, So they just basically, they did what Nintendo should have done. They took the Super Nintendo controller and increased, like they made it better. Yeah, and then meanwhile, Nintendo's like... We're going to reinvent it. And it's like... (coughs) Let's reinvent the wheel. Now this is what a controller is. And look, you got less face button options too. Yeah. Like, you've got the weird C controllers, and you've only got two buttons on this outside of those. Versus the PS4, it's got the traditional yeah, four the, face button this, style. This controller was wisely... This is a one, uh, this is basically a one-cycle controller. The PlayStation controller, like TJ said, is pretty much stuck around. It's largely the same. I mean, there's obviously been additions to it, but not many. And all the additions I, I feel they've made since the original uh, PS1 have been pretty smart. Yeah, let's just take an overall look at the uh, the look of the system since uh, last time Paul was saying that the Genesis is like a sexy oh, I've Ferrari all, I've and shit. i got this all figured out, dude. Yeah. The Nintendo 64 is that thought you see at the fucking club with her ass hanging half out of that miniskirt. She's out there and she wants some dick. The PlayStation 1 is like the girl next door. More conservative... Leaves more to the imagination. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about these. I, I don't know which... It depends on which one you're, I mean, you're in the mood for. You I mean, it's kind of weird because it looks like Nintendo here is trying to make it themselves look more like a Sega Genesis. And the Sony <laughs> is trying to kind of look more like what the they did with the well, fucking Super cool Nintendo. Like, they have, like, the green they have this ones. box shape that Nintendo was using before, and then all of a sudden Nintendo is trying to do this sleek black But, but Nintendo look. came out with a lot of different variations on this, too, in fairness to them. That is true. Sure. There I mean, a lot of different re-releases of these consoles. And I mean, yeah, and, and there's Sony plenty did, of versions. Sony did it similar, but they they just they slimmed it down. That's kind of what they did. They made it slimmer and more compact yeah. uh, with the updates they did. Yeah, because the original PlayStation uh, was pretty bulky. Was, kinda, was a pretty bulky thing. I mean, it was it was smaller than the N64. It was. Even in the original yeah. form. So. Well, I mean, the N64 had to fucking have a place for big-ass fucking cartridge. cartridges to stick into. But yeah, so. I'd say that this is the, the slut... And and the PS One is the the good girl, you know. Um, I'd fuck I'd, I'd fuck the N sixty four. To be honest, <clears throat> let's that that cartridge. Slot let's look at how long. let's look at how the numbers fucking went down here. Okay, so uh, sales figure wise, um, PlayStation thirty two bit fifth generation video game console released by Sony in December nineteen ninety four. Succeeded by the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3, of course. Um, Let's see. Worldwide. um, By March 1999, 50 million had shipped. By October 2001, 88.26 million had shipped. By March of 2007, a year after they stopped making them, 102.5 million had shipped. Crazy numbers. By the end of 1998... 11.5 million have been sold in the U.S. That's crazy. 
Okay. So uh, overall, I think it was a, what was it? One hundred nine million sales. One hundred by the end by March of two thousand seven, the PS one had sold one hundred two point five million. Okay, so that, that is worldwide. Okay. Okay. One hundred two million. One hundred two million. Not a slouch. So um, I don't know. Um, and these are the best selling games. Best selling games. Gran for, Turismo and interesting was enough. bundled though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, huge game. Uh, so Gran Turismo sold uh, ten point uh, eight five million. Three, etc. Final Fantasy VII, nine point eight million. Gran Turismo two, nine point three million. Tekken three, eight point three million. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, motherfucker. Pretty good games here. It's uh, crazy to me that the PS One was still out when Harry Potter came out, but I guess it was. Oh yeah, uh, I think the Harry Potter series started in like the mid nineties, mid to late nineties. To me, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been that fucking long. Uh, Parasite Eve, I remember that shit. That was a good game, actually. It was like um, Resident Evil with RPG mechanics. Yeah, it's so, pretty, like you, you, pretty interesting. Yeah, really mitochondria. Interesting. Yeah, I remember that. It was yeah. interesting. Spyro, you're your memory dragon. is in your mitochondria. Is Castlevania on here or whatever? Um, so here's the Nintendo 64 sales figures. 1997, uh, 5.8 million. Uh, let's see. How many did they sell overall? By the end of 2002, 32.92 million. million. So that's a Almost 33 huge million. gap in sales. <coughs> yeah, About so, 70 million less. So uh, United States, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. So is that, th- is that worldwide sales? Total sales, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Um, by the end of 2002, they only sold 32 million. I mean, obviously, I, I say only 32 <laughs> million. It's just compared to the, place, uh, to the PlayStation. So, and, and it's five-year life cycle. I mean, it just... I mean, and in fairness, the PlayStation did, was on sale a lot longer, but it just did way better. Well, it, it had a longer life cycle, too, because of the the... You know, graphical fidelity that they were able to get, and the mute, like it just remained. Well, current. he just um, uh, he, he, on the other page, he didn't read it, but it said it was only four thousand dollars for a dev kit, a developer's kit for the original PlayStation. Right, and the N sixty four. I don't know what it costs, but that's one of the things that makes Nintendo so exclusive in terms of what they put out. Is that to get a dev kit for it is expensive. They don't give them out to many people. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, the uh, the game sales difference here. So you see Mario 64. Bundled, but actually outsells Gran Turismo, but a, a bundled game. Uh, Mario. So let's take a look at number two, since that's not <laughs> bundled. Mario Kart 64. That might have been bundled at one point, actually, too. Uh, it, it would say if it was. Uh, it 9.8... I've got a feeling million. that Japan pads these numbers out pretty substantially. Um, whereas uh, Final Fantasy VII, also 9.8. So no, they're pretty even on number two here. Um, Gran Turismo 2 versus GoldenEye. Uh, Gran but also Turismo 2 bundled. starts to one. fall out there. They you know, know, bundled. Yeah, so these are bundled games here um, with various versions. You know, I mean, but basically uh, all dominated by Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Nintendo dominates its own list. So, I mean, so Rare or all Nintendo. All its top games it. are for its own system. Nintendo, now. Nintendo, Rare, Nintendo, HAL, which is independent but closely affiliated with Nintendo. Nintendo, Rare, Rare, Nintendo. Yeah, so Lucas LucasArts. Uh, Whereas that was if we look one. at Sony, it's like Polyphony, Digital Square. It's a little bit of everything. Nameco, Argonaut Games, Core Design, more Square, Naughty Dog, Konami, Namco, Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog, Square, Capcom, so, I mean, they're not really Insomniac the- Games, Heartbeat, Ubisoft, so, there, there's nowhere near the Reliance. Neversoft, you know, uh, so there's tons of different developers for this. For this, is just Nintendo and Rare, basically. And a lot of these developers too. The PS One went on to be huge development houses. NeverSoft was huge for a very long time. Fucking, um, what was that other one you mentioned over there? There's just a bunch. Naughty Dog is still around. Naughty Dog is yeah. They do um, what's that fucking? Uh, uh, was it Uncharted or something? Uncharted, yeah. yeah. Drake's for Drake's <laughs> video games, and those are huge and great too. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. This is uh, just the logos. Uh, the N64 logo, you know, obviously they're it's doing good. their classic Nintendo N. This uh, is a, it's, it's visually interesting. It's got the four pillars here. Yep. You know, uh, it, it kind of says, hey, we're moving into the 3D stuff now, you know. I, um, I, I always really love this logo. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really <coughs> solid logo for the system. Um, probably one of the few ways where Nintendo, I think, definitively beats PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's actually, this is interesting, there's some, um, some, uh, 
concept. Early in, in Let's see if I can get in close enough for us to actually look at these fuckers. Here's some early uh, prototypes on the PlayStation logo designs. Here's, they really were married to this red, yellow, blue. Yeah, they liked that, and they they wanted a basic shape. You know, they're just like let's get shapes. I got to be honest with you. I think they picked the best one. Out. Maybe the maybe the one at the top <coughs> left would have been kind of cool. The the three uh, weird circles. Yeah, but the rest. Some of, of these are hideous. Like, like this is this one here uh, is hideous. just garbage. Um, yeah, this really garbage dog concepts. shit. Uh, you know, most of these are really horrible. I mean, the one they settled on looks all right. But I think the N64 logo kind of... Uh, oh, it beats it. Out. It beats it out. Outright. Um, I don't think there's much competition there. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, we said we were going to list our uh, favorite games and our uh, for each system, because we did that last time. Cool. Uh, so why don't we start with Paul? All right. So with the PS1? You want to start with the PS1? Sure. <clears throat> All right. My favorite PS1 game is Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid. Um, this game defied my expectations in almost every way. I picked it up because it looked like a cool action game, and it's so much more than that. Kind of the the first really, really successful stealth genre game. This boss fight that we're looking at is one of the most mind-blowing boss fights ever still. The Psycho Mantis boss fight, where the first few times you fight him, he just decimates you. Like, he's, you're not going to win this if you don't know the trick. So you just die. Like, he, he can... He can sense what you're doing in the boss fight. He can sense everything that you're doing and dodge it before you do it. Um, and what you have to do to beat it is to unplug the controller and put it in the second player port. And because it's plugged into the second player port, he can no longer read your mind and tell what moves you're going to do. <laughs> um, which is, you know, whatever. It's a gimmick. Is, is it the famous boss fight where he basically tells you how to beat him? I mean, he does. He doesn't tell you outright. Yeah, but it, it he gives drops hints. hints, and they yeah, had to hints. because nobody's going to figure that out on their own. But it was just so cool. It was. It felt like I don't know. Like I was part of the game in a way that I'd never really felt. And um, the stealth gameplay is great. All the characters in it are great. It's such an over the top world, you know. So all of these bosses are cool. Psycho Mantis is such a fucking boss, but there's so many great ones. Um, I just love it. I just love it. I, I expected so little from it, and I got so much from it. Uh, what about for uh, N64? <clears throat> On the N64, my favorite game, the one I had the most fun playing anyway, was Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, you know, that's an interesting game because... Um, um, it's 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 It started off as just like another little kitty-friendly game, but then the development team's like, you know what, fuck that. Let's do something crazy. So this is like a... It was originally going to be like Conker's uh, Conquest or some shit. Some generic bullshit, basically. It was just going to be, you know, another generic little cute animal kitty game, and they then they decided they to... Kind of let's give it an edge. So this is the boss fight, the Great Mighty Pooh. He's a giant turd with pieces of corn for teeth, and he sings a great song. I'll uh, turn up the music yep. so they can hear it. Me, 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 I am the great mighty Pooh, and I am going to throw my shield at you. A huge supply of tea comes from my chocolate starfish. How about some scat, you little twin? So, I don't know why it's censored here. In yeah. the original game, I think you could turn off the censorship, and it was the yeah. first video game I'd ever played on a console that I remember hearing it cuss <laughs> to the extent. This I like the fact that he's finding a giant turd. Yeah, he's just a giant turd. He throws pieces of himself at you, and you have to throw corn at him and so, toilet paper. Yeah, and toilet paper. Yeah, and eventually he, you know, he's defeated. But all the bosses are like this. There's a uh, a sunflower boss that's like sexy as fuck. She's got big old titties. She tries to seduce you. So yeah, dude, he can't handle the TP. Hates that. <laughs> yeah, but you, there is an uncensored version. I don't know why this one. This was the most uh, clear version I could find. But you know, I was a teenager when I played this, so I was really susceptible to people playing to my desire to be an adult. Right. And getting a game like this, where it's clearly made with the adult mind, uh, with the with the adult in mind. Obviously, kids love this too. Um, but I don't know. I just really like this game. It's got great controls. It's always fun to play. It's really hilarious. Like I always laugh yeah, it's, playing it. It's funny as fuck. It's creative. Um, yeah. So my favorite. 
All right. Uh, how about you, Skittle? PS1. What's PS1? your favorite? <clears throat> really, really fucking tough. But I had to go with Final Fantasy VII. And for uh, that, I went ahead choice. and I went ahead and pulled the uh, Sephiroth boss battle. Sephiroth is uh, his uh, theme song is actually one of your ringtones. Yeah. You might want to mute it though. Um, it's uh, they can't hear it. Oh, okay. I mean, it's it's they can hear it, but it's really low. I mean, at this them. point, you have fucking you have put in a lot of time into this game. I mean, even get to Sephiroth, remember those dragons and shit you have to fight, TJ. Well, there's all kinds of optional bosses and optional things oh. find in this game, which is really awesome. But the, the problem is, if you don't do that optional shit, it's really hard to. If, at this point, it's gonna be really yeah, hard if to you defeat. If you just rush through Final Fantasy VII, you're not gonna. Yeah, you're gonna be you're fucking gonna fucked by the time you get to Sephiroth. You just you gotta grind. You gotta do the side stuff. You gotta find the fucking the big summons. Knights of the Round was like a three and a half minute summon. Yeah, one you of the cool I mean? things about uh, like these these old RPGs um, is just like all the preparation you have to do for a big battle with somebody and shit, and make sure your <coughs> characters are the right level and have the right shit equipped and everything else. It's me, Genova. No, I think you can skip a little past this. Yeah, we can go ahead and uh, get to the part where you're actually fighting stuff. <laughs> He's just beating down Genova right now. Taro energy. I'm still like midway through the battle. So what was it about this game, Scotty? Pushes it over the top for you. <clears throat> I would say the thing that really makes it is just like there's so many elements of the game. It's so complex. There's so many side quests. And it's, I, I, I like games that you can. I mean, yeah, you you do you invest a lot into it, but at the same time. It's really fun to build your character. It's really fun to get involved in the story. The story is so long and ongoing. I really just enjoy the how it, it, it feels like a really in-depth story. You know what I mean? The characters are really good in it too. The char- it has great character designs. A lot of memorable characters, like the, like great also the summons. Fantastic villain. Uh, the Sephiroth as a villain is great. The way he's built up, I don't really know if I am too fond of the way he's presented here in his final form or whatever the fuck. But well, all all uh, Final Fantasy bosses transform into some big abomination, you know. Like yeah. Kefka did the same thing; he turned into a big blob of shit. Yeah, but you know, like the reason why, like one of the things they did so well with Sephiroth was they established the son of a bitch must pay angle with oh, yeah. having him kill Eris. Who you, you know, it's kind of a love interest of your main character, Cloud, at the beginning Spoilers, of the game. Spoilers, Paul. Well, whatever. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you think she's going to be a character with you for the rest of the game, and she's just kind of killed about halfway through. I also kind of just love the Lovecraft, you know, in the this game. This these giant leviathans you fight. Oh, yeah. And, and the world it inhabits, it's just a, a very full and rich game in almost every sense of the word. And just a really... I think it really is just an exemplary example of what this platform could do. And the PlayStation One was just the perfect console for this game at the perfect time, and just everything came together. You looking forward to the uh, the reboot they're doing or the remake? Oh, for sure, definitely. Um, so, what about for the N sixty four? The N sixty four, I think its strength as a console was really just to jump in and have fun with your friends or you know, hot seat siblings. multiplayer. Yeah, hot seat multiplayer. So, uh, I picked Mario Kart sixty four. Now you and I had some Yo, some yeah, crazy yeah. times playing this <coughs> with each other. Now I, I was telling Paul earlier that like the thing that you and I would do. I mean, you were off in the bathroom, I think, but um, we would always try to get ten wins in a row against each other. You know, and I didn't achieve that till I think like ten to twelve years later. Yeah, and it was like it was crazy because we we'd play it all night and we'd do it, it'd be like. I, you'd win nine in a row, and then I'd win nine in a row, yeah. and then you'd win nine in a row, and then I'd win nine in a row. And we were always trying to get to that magic number of like, yeah, I beat you ten times in a row, bitch. You know what was really fucked up, too? Because when I finally did it and I beat TJ ten times in a row, it was like this weird moment of like, well, this is done in our lives. Because like, he never wanted to play again after that. Yeah. <coughs> It was decided at that point. It's a really fun game to fucking play and just like... I I always liked about Mario Kart that you could be in the lead for the whole fucking match. Some retards talking, so I'm just going to turn the volume all the way off. For and the, then you uh, can just fucking there. hit him with a fucking shell at the last second and win. Oh, yeah. The catch-up mechanics in this are so <laughs> crazy-making. Like, you'd be way out ahead in a blue shell. You know what I mean? A homing... Or was it was it a blue shell? In the, yeah, it was. Yeah, the blue shell was the baddest shell. It always would suck when you were... Because uh, you had the blue shell. the guy in first, right? Yeah, it always sucked yeah. if you had the blue shell and then you fucking took the lead somehow naturally. And then you... F- worthless. 
And then you fuck. Well, sometimes you'd forget and be like, fuck you, bitch. (laughs) Or you'd time it wrong. Like they were about to pass you and you'd be trying to launch it at them, but you didn't time it right. And then you end up fucking hitting yourself with the fucking blue shell. Oh, God, they have those courses. Like, remember Wario Stadium or for someone, a, a lightning bolt? Or you, you you're like, trip on a fucking banana that you put there earlier. Oh. Yeah, this is a game that just is made to mine salt out of people. I've had so many arguments. Not Maybe not this one. I didn't play a whole lot of 64, but I played a lot of the uh, uh, SNES Mario Kart. And fuck, man. And this would cause you a lot of fucking uh, combat situations with your friends and oh, shit. Oh, yeah, a lot of grief. A lot of bullshit, a lot of shit talk, man. Let me go ahead to where there's actually some racing going on here. I mean, the shit talk was just thick in this game. With oh, my games. God. Me and Scotty, I mean, like, we probably came close to beating the shit out of each other over oh, this sure, game a few I'm times. I'm sure it became physical a number of times <laughs> because of this game. Like, controllers being thrown. I know controllers were broken over this game a few times. Uh, things Controllers were thrown against the ground really hard. But, I mean, it's one of those games where, at the end of the day, it's it's it controls really well. And if you lose, it's pretty much your fault. Well, not only that, you can, I mean, you can lose, like I said, you, nine times in a row. They come back and win nine times in a row. It's like, it's like, 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 like in the, we talked about, like, like, we did the carrot episode. Like, you know, it's like, you lose, but it's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You know, in Final Fantasy VII, it's a totally different game. It's a total investment game. Yeah. This is a game anyone can pick up and learn how to play it within a few minutes. Agreed. Uh, the game I chose as my favorite PS1 game is probably, I don't know, it, it's, it might be a contender for my favorite game of all time. Um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Brilliant. Brilliant uh, platformer. Um, it, it's kind of when they started the whole, um, what, what kind of is termed now Metroidvania. Yep. Because it's all about this big, complicated, crazy map. Um, I fucking love Alucard as a protagonist. Uh, it's you feel so bad. It's like one of the first games I remember where you start with your character as a super badass, and then all of his shit's taken away, and you got to fucking regain it. it back. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, this game is filled with secrets too. It's so great. That, like you know, to actually get the um, the the, the final uh, battle. Oh yeah, and th- it's one of those games that like lets you know what percentage of shit you've discovered. So. You got this you're constantly, to go back. You're constantly trying to fucking find new secrets oh, it's a, in it's it. It's a huge labyrinth. You have to backtrack so much. Because it's also you get different abilities, so you might not be able to do now, some something. Some people think it's kind of cheap how they sort of double the length of the game by making you go into like an upside down version of the same castle. No, that's cool. I don't feel I don't But feel I think that that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. It, it's really cool. Um, it. I mean, it is it is a bit of a cheap way to extend it, but it works so well in this because these levels are so labyrinthine and 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 weird. And then when it inverts it, it just throws off your compass because by that time in the game, you've learned your way around the castle. Yeah, and now you don't know anymore. You know, and now all of a sudden backwards. it's like now the castle's upside down, bitch. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you know? it, it, it makes the game feel fresh again. Uh, more than halfway through, and, and then awesome. uh, you know, there's more. There's a shit ton of uh, you know monsters and stuff. New monsters, new bosses. Uh, we're looking right here at a, just a compilation of the bosses. I think from the you've game. beaten this game what about like five or ten times, TJ. Um, I've definitely played it through at least four times, and the first time, I mean, like I was, I I didn't even know about the uh, the the inverted castle. So the first time I beat it, I'm like, man, that's kind of an anticlimactic, weird ending. <clears throat> And then I realized that there's more, so I had to go back and play it again. And then I've played. Oh it yeah, like one of the first things that happens, like you talk about, like when your shit gets taken from you, like all your good items, like death takes it from you. And like the first time me and TJ beat it, it's like we never faced death. That was kind of weird. God, the music in this is so. Oh, weird. the music is really <laughs> bad. At the whole the the score of the whole game is cool, and there's different awesome scores for every area. Like, this is a There's boss There's a great score. leveling system. Now, there are some flaws with this game. When you die, it is a pain in the ass to get back into the game. game you gotta go... Over. Yeah, they do, like, that whole, like, game over. And then they it melts then away, you little, and then like, you gotta go back to the screen. The, start this, screen and, lo- and Some it. of these uh, screens here, like, it's been done way better in other RPGs. Like, item equipping and shit can be kind of a pain in the ass. But by and large, this game is fucking so badass. Uh, I watched a dude last summer. They do this big thing called Summer Games Done Quick. Yeah. I watched a dude play this blindfolded and beat it. Whoa. He's literally uh, fucking 
memorized every fucking area to the point where he doesn't even need to see it to play it anymore. That is crazy. Yeah, I can't I can't claim to have played it that much, but um yeah, I, I don't know. But uh, I don't know. It's an awesome game. Um it's totally fucking badass. Uh as for my pick Dude, I love the way the enemies die too. I love the uh, ah! <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I I just have a profound love of uh, I love RPGs and I love action platformers. And this, this combines those two D action platformers, yeah. and this is a great combination of both. Um, my favorite game for N sixty four, although I also found it to be really fucking frustrating at some port parts. Uh, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Oh, dude, um, the Water Temple. Water Temple was terrible. There was like. I always refused. I had this thing at the time where I just refused to look at any sort of player's guide or look up any sort of cheats or hints or anything. So there was parts of the game that I definitely got stuck on when they threw some more obscure, weird shit at you. Well, dude, I remember. This is a story I, I can actually tell about this. So TJ was stuck on the water temple, and he was just, he had spent hours and hours, and like he'd pause it, he'd do other shit. So finally he figures out how to get all the water levels right in the water temple. And I'm bouncing a tennis ball. And it bounces and gets away from me and hits the fucking N64 and freezes. Damn. Dude, that was the... That's, Damn. That's the, second, that's the second worst time one of my brothers ever fucked me over playing a video game. <laughs> you know what the worst time is? It was uh, I was playing Earthbound. I was like probably 80% through the game, my first playthrough. And fucking Stevie, I don't even remember how old he was. He was just a little kid. He walks up to the fucking SNES and just, without turning it off or anything, just pulls the game, the cartridge, out of the fucking system. Corrupted your save? Uh, When I went back, all the saves were gone. Motherfucker. They were all gone. I had to start over from the beginning of the fucking... Dude, I wanted to fucking beat him to death. My mom is like, it's no big deal. It's like, bitch, it is a big deal. (laughs) Yeah, I just spent like fucking like... (laughs) Do you have any idea how much of my life I've sunk into this at this point? Oh, shit. But uh, this is a great game here. I didn't, I didn't mean to div- get diverted on Earthbound. Um, this is great. I didn't the, you know, it, it's just like I remember having like early childhood memories of, um, going through Hyrule as a little you know overhead view of Link and shit, and imagining what it was gonna be like. And then this game comes out, and it's sort of like this. 3D representation of what I always thought about Hyrule and stuff, and it's <laughs> super immersive. The mythology of it is just great. Uh, all these crazy monsters and characters you encounter are totally awesome. This just, is a, this I don't is know. Like the ideal game for this platform. I mean, um, for this console, it's it's just so badass. It just that bitch right. sucked though. I will give him. Oh, that. Navi, yeah, she's Navi annoying. was a piece of hey! shit. Hey. hey! But it's like, yeah. can I just disable you or something? I mean, even as limited as the cartridge capacity was, this was a great boss fight. He looks good. It's just everything about the design of this game lended itself. This is the this is the ideal game for this system. We're really talking about an immersive game, like a long playthrough game. I mean, the temples are so great. There's, I mean, there's there's just so much you can say. Like, the, 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 the I love of, like, the boss fights in it. I love the. Most of the temple, I don't mean the water temple is frustrating, but even that's kind of fun to conquer. <coughs> um, for, for a teenager, there's no better fucking way to spend an afternoon if you love gaming than to play this game. Yeah, any of the Zelda games. I really. mean, uh, all the Zelda games that I've ever played have been great. This is my favorite of them. Um, yeah, I just love this fucking game. So uh, that pretty much concludes it. Um, I think that uh, it's pretty impossible to say that the N64 wins this. Yeah. Um, Graphically, the PS1 is superior in terms of sales. It is superior in terms of its sound. It's superior. I will say this. Across the board, there's so many ways it's superior. I think the the N64 is a great system with some great games. If you want to just jump in and play, though... And things that really stood the test of time, I feel, as far as the replay and the nostalgia, uh, like the replay value from the nostalgia perspective, I think the N64, in a lot of ways, is superior. Yeah, I mean, it's probably easier to go back and play an N64 it really than is. it is a PlayStation. Um, um, I think that, you well, I mean, that's just because, once again, Nintendo... Was, they were targeting... They were trying to... Pl- the casual pl- gamers. 
Yeah, and and not only that, but like there's there's so many titles that they have just such a they, that they keep exclusive to themselves that they just always make sure they deliver on um and there's a lot of great classic games for n64 i would never piss on it or shit on it or whatever but i mean overall looking at all the factors involved here i gotta give it to the playstation yep i don't disagree I think it runs away with it, honestly. I mean, yeah, it, it's hard to argue any other way. I mean, there's great, like I said, you said the N64 is overall not a bad system, but you just have to look at the technology. And, and not, it, it's not always that the, the, being technology is a superior in the technology space makes you better because there's been plenty of flops for stuff that are just ahead of their time, like the Sega CD ahead of its time, but it was a flop. The PlayStation gets it right. It emulates the right things that made Nintendo successful. It drops things that doesn't, and it just does it better. Yep. The right console at the right time. Yeah. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to go back to L.A. and finish up that blowjob. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go back to L.A., guys. All right, let's uh, go. Let's get I'm going to finish getting drunk. There we go. There we go. That's it. That's all you get for free. We're generous people. But our generosity only goes so far because we're also, at the end of the day, greedy guys. It's my last sales pitch to you. We're greedy. Give us your money. We want money. Give us your money! Oh, sorry. That's my raging id uh, coming out. Uh, yes, we, we, we delight in you as people. Please join the Pessimist Productions Patreon so you can see things like, what's this? The Jordan Peterson gauntlet. But only you can make that happen. Only you. Yes, you right there. Oh, I don't want to join. They'll never see this. But if you do join, then you will <gasps> join. Join! Join! <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Bye.